with your layer masks applied to your photos, we now want to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer so that we can apply our complementary colors to um, each photo. So we need to start by hiding the bottom layer and selecting the top layer. Okay? And it doesn't matter, you know, what part of it, just hide the bottom layer. Okay? So right next to the layer mask is this create new fill or adjustment layer. It's a circle, half of it white, half of it black. If you click on it, you get a pop-up. And in this pop-up, we're going to choose hue and saturation. Now, I had decided already that I wanted my first set of colors to be this kind of orange and blue. Okay? So, and they're opposite each other. That's what complementary is. So, I want to, up here in my properties, once I apply the hue and saturation, my properties appears. I can click colorize and then you can see that I can adjust the hue. So I'm going to adjust the first one down to orange. I can adjust the amount of saturation which for most of us we probably want it to bring it up some. Okay, The amount is going to depend on what you want. And then, of course, lightness and darkness change can change as well. Be careful how you adjust it because it greatly affects the photo. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine somewhere there in the center. Then, once I have that color the way I want, I'm going to select those two layers and I'm going to merge those two layers so they become one. Then I'm going to hide that layer and go to the other layer and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply my hue and saturation. I'm going to click on colorize and then I remember that opposite of my orange was a blue. And I'm going to increase the saturation. I'm going to leave my lightness where it is. And then if I turn on my other layer, I can compare and say, yeah, that's, whoops, that's pretty close to the blue and the orange that I had selected. So I'm satisfied with that. I can then merge those two layers together so that they are finalized. You're going to repeat this process with each photo. I'm going to show one more time and then you can finish each of your six photos on your own. Okay, so I'm going to hide the bottom layer and I'm going to select the top layer. I'm going to apply my hue and saturation. Check colorize. Now, on this I need to figure out a different set of complementary colors. I like yellow and blue. So if I click up here, I think this one up here is the center one. This one down here, I'm going to choose a really bright yellow and a really deep blue. So I am going to colorize this one. I'll move the slider over here to yellow and pump up that saturation. And because that's a white dog, I might want to adjust my lightness and darken him up a little bit. And then I can select both, merge layers. And then I'm going to show the other layer. And I'm going to do the same thing, add my hue and saturation adjustment layer, colorize, Move my slider, slider so it's in the blue. Adjust. This one I probably actually want to lighten up a little bit as I adjust my saturation. And then I can compare the two together. I'm okay with that. Those are complementary colors, opposite of each other on the color wheel. 
Okay, so here we have that blue and that yellow. Okay, and I think that that's pretty close. So I will merge those together, and then I have two layers that I can work with. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video or pause my recording so that you can finish your photos. And then we'll come back and go on to the next step. Now, you do need to save all of these as Photoshop files so that it keeps the layers in check. And because there's multiple layers, when you try to save, it probably is going to make the format Photoshop automatically. You don't have to rename them. Just keep them the same name as what your photo was. Makes it easy to find. Okay. But at this point, you should have six um, files, six Photoshop files that have color or hue and saturation applied to them based on the selection you made with your layer mask. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is we are going to um, apply filters. Now, some filters, but not all of them, um, rely on your foreground and background colors to determine what the filter will look like. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to keep the same color scheme that you've already started. So if you will. Um, click on the eyedropper tool, you can sample an area of one of your colors and then you can sample the area of another color for your background color. Okay, so whichever one is foreground or background doesn't really matter to me. You might, as you apply filters, you might actually try both because it can make a difference. Um, what we'll do is we will select the first layer that we're going to do a filter on. Up here in your filter menu, we're going to choose Convert for Smart Filters. Okay, and it basically it says it to enable re-editable smart filters, the selected layer will be converted into a smart object. We can click OK. We can tell it's a smart object because it has that little symbol there. Okay. Then we're going to go up to the filter menu again, and there is a filter gallery. Um, there is also a list of many other filters here. Okay, you are going to be able to choose what you want to do. Um, I am going to start by doing pixelate pointillize. You're going to realize, and you can see it here because you can see the colors that it's choosing. Um, I can adjust the zoom so that I can see all of it. I can adjust the cell size so I can make it small little points or large ones. And when I'm ready, I click OK. OK, so I can see my colors have affected this particular um, filter. So I'm going to go to the next layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to convert for smart filters. I am then, I'm going to choose a different filter. Okay. So on this one, I am going to do something different. Um, I'm going to go to stylize and solarize. And you can see that that gave some interesting color effects to the other um to the other selection okay and if you like what you've done now i want you to notice that right here in your layers it tells you what filters you're using okay so i want you to use different filters on each part so you're going to use two filters on each image okay so i'm going to go ahead and save that as a photoshop file okay and then I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll go ahead and start on one filter. I'm going to convert for smart filters. This time I'm going to go up here to filter gallery. It shows the whole thing here. You're going to notice that I have some different options. Oops, I did forget to do something first. I want to make sure again that I choose 
my colors. And, you know, depending on where you click in your image, you might wind up with different colors. So be aware of that. Okay. And now I'm going to go up to my filter gallery again. And I'm going to try colored pencil. And I can try a few different ones to see how they look. Okay. And again, I can adjust several things. You can see here the different options. You can see them here. I can adjust the brush size. I can adjust the brush detail. And I can adjust the texture. And when I like what I see, I can click OK and it's going to apply it. And it tells me that this is from the filter gallery. And here it is dry brush. OK. So the next one. I'm going to go filter. This time I am, well, I'll choose to go out of the filter gallery again. Um, this time I'm going to choose watercolor. No, I'm not going to choose watercolor. I'll try poster edges. And I'm going to do, I'm going to play with the thickness, the intensity, and the posterization. And I'll click OK. So now I have, oops. You know what I didn't do? I didn't create, I didn't convert that to a smart filter first. Filter, convert for smart filters. Because what it does, what the smart, smart filters do is it allows me to add a filter and not have it affect the original image. Okay, so let me try that one more time. Um, was it, it was poster edges. There, that's my settings. So that's what I'll put on. And I can see what I've had and I can also if I decide that I want to test it out with something different I can hide or delete the, the filters so I'm gonna go ahead and stop and continue with mine you should continue with yours remember each one should have a different filter oops I didn't mean to open that um, okay so now I can go through and I can see all my images are saved they each have different filters applied to them, the each layer in each um, in each file. I have also saved them as a Photoshop file and now I want to save each one of them again as a JPEG file. Now once I do that, if I don't change the file name, it's going to rewrite the original one. So I am going to do JPEG and I am simply going to add the word filter to the front. That way I know that that's the filtered one and it's not the original one. Okay, so I'm going to go file, save as. I'm going to put filter, dash, and change it to a JPEG. Do that for each of your images now. 